my name is Charles Demas, and today I'll be talking to you about containment theory and how it applies to business. Our objectives today are to define containment theory. We'll talk about the history and the concepts behind containment theory. We'll also illustrate how the controls in containment theory can lead to either conformity or deviance in an individual. We're also going to define examples of workplace deviance. And we're going to talk about the controls that can be implemented to limit deviancy in business. So containment theory is defined by looking at the different factors that make a person either resist deviant or delinquent behavior or give in to it. Um, the two main concepts behind that are inner containment and outer containment, and we'll talk about those here in a moment. Main research uh, for this was done by Walter Reckless and some other containment theorists, and it began in the 1930s and continued on until the late 70s. It later became more control theory, um, but we're going to talk about containment theory today. The research was started uh, figuring out what led to delinquency in, in children, and of course those children later become adults. Um, containment theory also looks at the pushes and the pulls that influence a person um, to be deviant. Let's talk about inner containment. So inner containment um, is influenced by self-control. How disciplined are you within the person that you are to resist um, deviant behavior or will you gravitate towards it? A good self-concept and ego strength are essentially your self-esteem, how strong you are within yourself and how comfortable you are with who you are. Um, parental bonds also, uh, affect inner containment. If you're raised in a two-parent home uh, where you're able to get the proper discipline and care, or were you raised in a single family home or single parent home where um, you know one parent is uh, working two jobs to just make ends meet to make sure you've got power and food, all that good stuff. Um, all those, or were you growing up in an abusive home? All these things um, can influence uh, your inner containment and whether you lean towards deviance or if you uh, will consistently stay within cultural norms. Norm retention. Um, how committed are you to uh, conforming to the norms of society and uh, what is expected of, of you? Uh, goal orientation. How goal oriented are you? Are you willing to work as hard as you need to the right way uh, to achieve your goals? Or are you willing to get to those goals in any way, shape or form, uh, including why cheese steel? Outer containment. Um, has to do with the environment around you. Um, and those things are like institutional organization reinforcement of norms. So in the business world, how how is the culture that you are working in, um, how much are they tied to cultural norms? Are they doing business the right way? Are they dumping toxic waste uh, illegally into the ocean? Um, are they like Enron where there is improper bookkeeping and, and hiding of debt and, and those types of things where they're committing fraud. Are these things allowed in that culture or are they ruled out and are they spelled out? <coughs> Excuse me. Are they spelled out uh, in company policies? Uh, what are the goals that are set in the company? Are you are those goals? Are we going to meet those by any means necessary? Um, or um, are we going to obtain, obtain these the right way? Um, the expectations that are set before you are kind of like goal settings, but are are you expected to perform in a certain, um, certain manner? Effective supervision. that uh, at, As a child, when you're growing up, were you receiving proper discipline and supervision? And same in, uh, in a company, um, are your supervisors monitoring the work that you're doing and giving you the support that you need and the equipment that you need to, to complete the job? And are they making sure you're doing it in the right way? <clears throat> uh, discipline. Are, as a child, uh, did you receive the pro proper discipline when you did act out so you would maintain those cultural norms? And then in, within the company, are you maintaining discipline? And do you have progressive discipline policies in place for when people are behaving outside uh, cultural norms with harassment or theft or fraud, those types of things? Do you have the proper discipline in place to take care of those behaviors? Um, 
belonging and acceptance. Um, do you feel, uh, does the person that's working for you or as a child, were you growing up where you had a sense of belonging in the community that you were in, in the school that you attended, or in the culture that's within the business? Are, do the employees come in and feel like an outcast or do they have some belonging and acceptance? All these things in the environment around you uh, affect whether or not you will adhere to cultural norms. Now we're going to talk about pushing and pulling. So pushes are kind of are kind of what's individual to you. It's within the individual and it's kind of tied to inner containment. What's your internal drive? Are you going to work hard and achieve things the right way? Are you going to do achieve what you want by any means necessary? How easily are you frustrated? <clears throat> um, if things aren't going your way, are you going to keep plugging away or are you going to do things once again the wrong way and the easy way at times? Uh, rebellion as a child. If you've got very controlling family, sometimes, you know, with religious kids, when things are very strict, sometimes they rebel against the cultural norm just just because they can. <clears throat> um, other things that could push you with with it from within yourself is if you're told that you're not worthwhile and you're abused as a child or society tells you and and remember in the 1960s um, we're talking about the civil rights movement where uh, minorities especially blacks are told that you're you're below the white man you can't eat at the same restaurants you can't attain um, you can't attend the same schools these things are going to affect you and if you don't have that good inner containment that good self idea you might be more prone to deviant behavior because, you know, if you tell me I'm trash, well, I'm going to be what you say I am. And you might be prone to more deviant behavior. And it depends on that inner containment and and the outer containment and the environment in which you were growing up in and, and your, your self idea. <clears throat> now, this theory doesn't include uh, pathology or compulsions um, like kleptomania, um, some bipolar disorders, things like that. It's talking about the normal person that could be working for your company. Um, what are these pushes and pulls that lead a normal person towards deviance or delinquency? Um, pulls on you are things in the right once again in society around you did you grow up in an impoverished home where decisions had to be made are you eating tonight are are we keeping the heat on during the winter those types of things and <clears throat> if if you're worried about those types of things are you willing to steal from others to make those ends meet um and conflict with society around you as a whole the people around you with yourself with others with family friends whatever um, <clears throat> being a minority when you're in the minority sometimes your opportunities for success are less than what others have uh, especially if you're in an impoverished environment those who are able to go to private schools and private colleges may have the networking and given some of the skills that others aren't just because of the socioeconomic status with which you started um, and we'd like to think we came we've come a far uh, an extreme distance as far as racism and stuff in America but if you look in April of 2018 in Philadelphia just recently there was two black men in the Starbucks um, waiting for uh, a business meeting with another person and uh, somebody from Starbucks called 911 and the police came and those gentlemen were arrested uh, based on the color of their skin and these guys acquitted themselves quite well and and handled everything with class um, but if these gentlemen <clears throat> did not have the same self-containment and the outer containment and have that self-worth that they have they may go, may may be influenced to go you know what you think I'm trash or have that info you already think I'm going to act the way you think that I am um, but these men handled themselves quite well because they have that inner containment um, it is not fair that this happens in our society but unfortunately it still does happen once again we already talked to limited access uh, to opportunity and success um, sometimes when you're growing up in the poor neighborhoods you don't have the same advantages that other people have 
Now we're going to talk about work, workplace deviance. Um, we're just going to give some examples of it. So uh, production deviance is, you know, leaving early, leaving work early while you're still on the clock, uh, costing the company money, uh, excessive, taking excessive breaks, um, cutting corners in production, maybe uh, not disposing of waste properly and, and polluting the environment, which could poison others, those types of things. Um, <clears throat> are smoke breaks considered uh, production deviance? Um, cause many studies show those that are smoking, uh, if they're allowed to take breaks on their own, um, they take multiple breaks throughout the day and they, they lose, are less productive than non-smokers. And then depending on the culture that's going on, um, maybe the non-smokers are like, Hey, this person's getting this many breaks. You know, I'm going to take those same breaks that they are, um, costing money. Uh, to the company. Political deviance is uh, playing favorites within work, even if it's unwarranted, gossiping about others, um, uh, blaming, especially publicly, uh, and pointing fingers at other employees. Um, there's a saying, uh, praise in public, punish in private. If you're going to have to blame your employee, do the co essentially coaching and counseling in private and say, hey, you're not doing things properly. Let's get you coached up. We got to do this the right way. Doing it in public shames that person. And then they're more likely to deviate um, in retaliation or rebel uh, because of it. Uh, property deviance is sabotaging equipment. Say uh, the company's looking at automating jobs and uh, the people don't want to lose their jobs and they start sabotaging equipment. Kickbacks are... Um, Things like uh, the purchasing agreement person who buys widgets that you need to create your product. And they're like, hey, we're not going to use your company unless you give me money under the table. Uh, that's an example of a kickback and stealing. <clears throat> Personal aggression is, is harassment, uh, verbally abusing others, um, stealing from coworkers or endangering others. Um, you know, not following policies on manufacturing, putting others in danger. That's, um, and depending on the culture within the company that you make, people may lean one way or the other as far as deviance or not. And you need to make sure you have policies in place. And we'll, we'll talk about this here. And if we're also talking about the fraud triangle, which has to do with a little bit more of on the accounting side of things. Um, the fraud triangle are things that can lead to theft within a company. Um, and depending on those internal pushes and pulls um, and your internal and external controls that can influence whether you're gonna be deviant or not. So sometimes have an opportunity, not having sufficient controls. Say you have an accountant uh, for your company that sits there and rec reconciles the purchasing of the books and the receipts and that type of thing, but they're also the person that cuts the checks to pay for these things. If they decide that they want to steal money, they can because they can start generating paperwork saying, hey, I paid company XYZ for this widget when they actually cut a check for themselves, but they forge documents showing that they paid the company. Um, so sometimes you need to have controls where jobs are separated from each other so people cannot steal from you. You're not providing them the opportunity to steal money. Uh, financial pressure, personal uh, uh, or professional issues um, can affect that. Uh, so if somebody is feels like they're not getting rationalization paid enough by your company and they need to make ends meet, they may be more likely to steal. Or on the professional side, say you have sales goals and people that aren't meeting those sales goals feel pressure um, that they're going to get fired. Like in the Enron case with the uh, bottom 20 percent of performers, they were firing those guys. And as, as a father, I can tell you that if I'm going to lose my job, I'm going to be extremely worried. <clears throat> uh, if I'm a bottom performer, instead of creating a culture where the people are supported and they're coached and say, hey, let's provide you some education and ways that we can improve your performance and you're just fired. These people are going to be more likely to steal, cheat, lie to make those numbers. <clears throat> And once again, with the rationalization, say, hey, this company doesn't pay me enough. I don't mind stealing from them, things like that. So ways that we can provide containment, outer containment, and, and at the very end, ways to improve a person's inner containment um, to avoid um, deviant behavior.
we're going to cover those things right now. So one, uh, the company has to have an employee uh, handbook that spells out the company policies and of expected behaviors, and those things need to be enforced on a regular basis. Um, you want to have ongoing training that refresh the policies, you know, once yearly say, hey, these are the things we expect of you as an employee. That way they know the policies and what's expected of them. Um, you want to encourage whistleblowing and adhere to the Sarbanes and Oxley Act and the protections that those acts give them. Uh, that way, if people are within your company <clears throat> doing deviant behaviors, committing fraud, uh, like in the case of Enron and that type of thing, they are encouraged and to report the problem. And once they report it, they are protected from retaliation from their supervisors and things like that because these people are protecting the company. Um, other things you wanna look at are job specialization, rotation and enlargement where needed. So job specialization is like uh, one guy, uh, guy A at a manufacturing plant makes um, radio knobs and that's all he does all day long. He gets really, really good at it, and he becomes very efficient and makes makes those knobs better than anybody else. But at the same time, everyone wants you want him to have some job satisfaction, and that gets very monotonous. So sometimes you want to rotate them into other jobs. That way, they can have other experiences, and they're less likely to be deviant because they feel trusted, and there's there's enrichment in their lives, and it's not mindlessness. Um, and the other thing that you can do is job enlargement is where you give them more responsibilities to show that they are trusted and valued members of your company. Um, another control or containment that you need to have in your company is seg segregation of related duties. Like we were talking earlier with the accountant, the person that's reconciling the books of what you're paying out needs to be separate from the person that's cutting those checks. That way there is less chance of fraud. Um, same with uh, you've got a cashier that cashes out the checks and stuff. You want to have a supervisor that gets their register receipt and reconciles that money. You don't want the cashier themselves doing that because they can start fudging those numbers and and stealing money. So you need to have segregation of duties where needed to protect your company from theft. Um, you want to provide, once again, a culture of support and education for those who need coaching and progressive. You also want to have progressive discipline policies for those that aren't listening to the culture or are not listening to the education and the support that you're giving them. So the employees that are your bottom performers, you want to make sure that you're educating and coaching them up and helping giving them the things that they need to succeed with in your company. Um, that way they're doing things the right way and you're teaching them how to do things the right way. And they're less likely to do deviant behavior. And then at the times when they have deviant behavior, you need to have the proper discipline policies and enforce those policies. Um, that way, if they're not adhering, you can fire them or you just correct the actions. And most people do want to perform well and will listen to those coaching. You also want to have employee assistance programs and membership assistant programs. Um, membership assistant programs vary. Uh, employee assistance programs are held by the company. Membership assistance programs are for companies like um, government employees that have unions. And you want to encourage your unions to have membership assistance programs. That way, when people are having marital problems, um, financial problems, they can go speak to a counselor and keep their, in, their own internal uh, controls intact and that will protect your company from theft. If somebody's gone through the divorce and they're short on money and they're not getting the support that they need emotionally, uh, they they might be m more prone to deviance. And, but if you, you as a company show that you are concerned and have an employee assistance program where they can get some free counseling to help them through these things, it could provide your companies for some protection. Um, so these are just some of the ways that you can protect a company from deviance. I appreciate your time and I hope you have a good day.